How to Protect and Preserve Archaeological Sites When you protect and preserve an archaeological site, you're shielding it from forces or actions of others that could destroy the artifacts and historical information contained within the site. The key priority is to register the site and preserve it in place, a phase known as banking the site, so you can make the plans and raise the money necessary to properly excavate the artifacts within. Part 1 Banking the Site 1. Record the site's location and boundaries. The existence of an archaeological site should be noted on the deed to the property at the county recorder's office. The deed also provides the boundaries of the property itself, so you can determine if additional permissions will be required to excavate the site. When you begin excavation plans, an archaeological preservation easement should be created. This is a deed limitation that allows archaeologists to continue plans to excavate and preserve the site even if you sell the land. Because the artifacts at an archaeological site typically are underground, you may not be able to determine the exact area of the site until excavation begins. While you may only be able to protect the portion of the site on your own property, you may want to let neighbors know of the possibility that artifacts may be located on their property as well. 2. Contact your state's Historic Preservation Office Each state has a Historic Preservation Society or office that handles registration of historic and archaeological sites. There may be a local office you can visit, or you may be able to get the information you need from the office's website. If you're seeking national registration as well as state, your state office can give you information on the requirements for both. Typically, national registrations must go through the state office first. Get copies of the forms and instructions necessary to complete your application for registration, so you'll know the types of evidence you'll need to establish the site's archaeological significance. People working in the office also can give you additional information on the registration process or assist you in gathering information and filling out your forms. 3. Gather the necessary information and documentation. States have different requirements regarding the proof necessary to establish that a location on private property should be preserved as an archaeological site. Most state requirements are similar to the federal requirements, although the scope of significance may be different. National registration typically is available only for sites of national historic or archaeological significance while sites that have state, but not national, significance still may qualify for state protection. Keep in mind that you may need to work with a professional archaeologist to amass sufficient evidence that the site should be registered as archaeologically significant. Someone at your state's Historic Preservation Office may be able to put you in contact with someone who conducts preliminary assessments of locations such as yours. 4. Complete the forms to register the site. Once you have all of your evidence together, you're ready to fill out the application and file it with your state's Historic Preservation Office. The process varies widely among states, so make sure you've included everything required. Typically, you must include details about the makeup of the site, the nature of the artifacts located there, the location and owners of the property, and the site's historic significance. The site also may be inspected by a State Historic Preservation Office professional to verify the claims in your application. If your application is missing necessary information or documentation, it may result in a delay or even rejection of your application. Some states charge a fee to file an application, typically a few hundred dollars. 5. Receive your Certificate of Registration if your property meets the requirements of your state's Historic Preservation Office, it will be registered as an archaeological preservation site. Once the registration is in place, you can begin plans to excavate the site. Registration also should be filed along with the deed at your county recorder's office. The designation may come with tax benefits, depending on your state's property tax laws. 
Registration means the site falls under state or federal criminal laws, which make it a felony to loot or disturb an archaeological site. Both before and after your application is approved, avoid doing anything to disturb the artifacts located at the site. Part 2 Maintaining Physical Security 1. Gain familiarity with the general location. To get a good understanding of the types of measures that may be necessary to secure the site, you need to know what possible threats exist, or if the site has a history of destruction or looting. If you live on the property where the archaeological site is located, you probably already have a good idea of how secure the area is. However, if your home isn't located on the same property, you should consider spending several hours there both during the day and at night to determine what measures would be helpful in securing the site from looting and destruction. Keep in mind that it can take months, if not years, to develop a sound excavation plan and raise the funds necessary to begin. In the meantime, your top priority must be keeping the site secure and intact. Let neighbors know about the existence of the archaeological site and the need to keep it secure. They may be able to help. At the very least, they can alert you to suspicious activity. 2. Build a fence around the site. If the site can be fenced without disturbing any artifacts, it can help to keep looters off the property as well as simple trespassers who just want to look but might inadvertently damage or destroy the site. Check the boundaries of the property and make sure the fence doesn't encompass land beyond the boundaries recorded in the deed. You may need to have a property surveyor come out and mark the property line so you know where you can place a fence. Provided the site isn't located in a residential area where it might disturb neighbors, Floodlights also can provide a measure of protection. Lights can stay on all night or be triggered by motion detecting sensors. 3. Take measures to protect the surface. If the area in which the site is located is prone to erosion or is suffering damage due to the elements that might threaten artifacts of archaeological significance, you might want to consider the use of tarps or other means to keep the area intact until it can be properly excavated. You may want to have a professional land conservationist or surveyor come out and look at the property. He or she can suggest ways to reinforce or preserve the surface if it is at risk. Additional barriers or other protections may be necessary if the area is prone to flooding or landslides. 4. Work with local police. Since looting or disturbing an archaeological site is a crime, you may be able to get your local police department to conduct periodic patrols of the area to deter would be looters and help keep the site secure. Contact the police and sheriff's departments and let them know about the location of the site. Many law enforcement offices also will provide a free security consultation in which they come out to the property and suggest ways to keep it secure. If the area around the site has heavy foot traffic, for example, if it borders public or commercial property, you may want to consider hiring private security guards to patrol the premises, particularly during night and evening hours. Part 3 Planning Professional Excavation 1. Enlist a professional archaeologist. Only a licensed professional has the knowledge and skills necessary to assess the site and come up with a detailed plan to safely excavate the artifacts found on the site. Beyond the required expertise to accurately assess the property, state and federal law require anyone working on a registered archaeological site to have up to date licenses and permits for excavation. Your State Historic Preservation Office typically will have a list of licensed archaeological contractors who are approved by and registered with the state to excavate registered archaeological sites. Interview several archaeologists if you can before you choose someone, and make sure the person you choose has experience working on artifacts from the same historical period as those found on your site. 2. Contact nearby universities. 
If your site is located near a university with an archaeology department, professors and students may be able to take on the excavation as a research project, providing access to valuable university equipment, materials, and labs. If the site is unique or has major significance, you also might contact archaeology departments at larger or more prestigious universities, even if they're located at some distance. Check professors' credentials and areas of expertise on the university's website before you contact them. Choose people who focus on the type of artifacts likely to be found on your site. For example, if you believe there are ancient Native American artifacts on your property, including some remains of a settlement, you want to work with a department or professor that specializes in Native American history and archaeology, not someone whose experience and expertise is in excavating dinosaur fossils. 3. Conduct initial surveys The archaeologist in charge of the excavation of the site will survey the area and conduct tests to design a detailed plan of action for excavating the property, as well as potentially revealing the size and scope of the site and the excavation that will be necessary. Initial surveys will reveal the nature of the archaeological site and the types of artifacts likely to be present. The archaeologist also may get some information about the location of articles and the density of artifacts located in particular parts of the site. The entire area of the site will be mapped and grid so excavation can be planned. The survey also will account for the types of soil present and the depths where artifacts may be uncovered. You may be able to make use of volunteers through your state historic preservation office to assist in site recording and monitoring. 4. Raise money to fund the excavation. Even with university assistance, professional excavations can be costly. The head archaeologist should include a proposed budget with his or her plan, which you can use to pursue grants and funding from state, national, and non-profit archaeological societies. The assistance or involvement of a university department of archaeology can greatly assist in obtaining grants for the project. You also can engage in traditional fundraising efforts to solicit donations from non-profit organizations, businesses, and community members. Your State Historic Preservation Office likely can assist in these efforts. In addition to grants and donations, you may be able to get a conventional loan or mortgage to cover the costs of the excavation. However, you should try to raise as much of the necessary funds as possible through grants and donations rather than loans.